Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cover, I am Penj and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 where we join Petty King Offa who last time out took over the reigns of the Cover Dynasty due to the death of his father Duke Ethelweird who I notice now has been elevated to Petty King Ethelweird. So that sort of title, the Dukes of all gone, and the title of Petty King has kind of gone back because if we look, there we go, Petty King T and Petty King Waltheof. So the Petty King title has gone all the way back, which is quite nice. So yes, we're all Petty Kings now, which is splendid. But yes, alas, Petty King Ethelweird did die of old age on the 7th of March, 1162, at the grand age of 63. And yes, since Offa took over, he has been doing things his own way. And he has also changed the plan. He has changed the Cupboard Dynasty master plan. The master plan laid out by his granddad. I mean, I was going to say Duke T, but no, it's Petty King T. There he is. Oh, it's a pleasure to see you, T. Hello, T. We miss you. So yes, the plan that he set up all those years ago that was then followed dutifully by Offa's dad and of course T's son Ethelweird, that plan to become the King of Wales is a plan no more because Offa's not interested in that plan. He is not bothered by the King of Wales title. It's a title that's kind of, it's popped in and out of existence a few times and many other people will have had it. Offa's not about that. He wants something new and unique and special to him. So yes, he does not want that title. He wants to become the glorious sounding King of Cupboard, and I can't blame him. I mean, becoming the King of Cupboard just sounds brilliant. He wants to create a whole new kingdom, an entirely new kingdom, a glorious new realm of Cupboard to elevate the dynasty up to fantastic new heights. And he made a good start because this, all of these wonderful cupboardy lands here, they are no longer part of England, but are of course part of the independent nation of Cupboard. So yes, of course, last time there was a little bit of an independence war with our liege. We went to the King of England and said, hello, King of England, we'd like to become independent and go it alone, please. What do you think? And he quite rightly and quite predictably said, no, you can't. That's a silly idea. Let's go and have a fight about all that. But I don't think he could have said anything else. He couldn't have just let all that territory slip away without a fight because that is an awful lot of land that he would have just given up without any kind of contest whatsoever. I mean, that is a lot of land for England. That's a lot of gold and a lot of levies and everything else. So of course, yes, there was a little bit of a fight. I mean, in terms of troop numbers, I think we were slightly outnumbered. We got some mercenaries in because we had quite a bit of money. They helped out quite a bit, but England do have a little bit of an Achilles heel and it's right down here. This is the capital of England here in Winchester and it's really woefully defended. It has a fort level of two which makes it very, very easy to just go in and siege. So we put some troops just here. We had a nice stroll past Stonehenge, went over here to Winchester and we sieged this and we got ourselves a very important prison. Now I can't remember exactly who it was. It might have been the king's sister. I can't recall, but whoever it was, they were important enough to generate plus 50% to the war score in our favor. So we're halfway to winning the war just from this one siege just here and a captive. And then of course we'd siege this, so we took this. I think we took a couple of more counties and then we had a bit of a fight as well over here somewhere. And that was it. The war was won. The king had absolutely no option but to concede to our demands. And yes, that is where we are now, the independent nation of cupboard. However, as we can see here, we're not quite ready to become a new kingdom just yet. We have got to wait a tiny little bit longer, which is fine. We can do that. We've waited long enough as it is. We can wait a little bit more because as wonderful as Offer is and he's very very wonderful indeed he's got some good stats and some good traits he's just generally an all-round very splendid person but he just has not been around long enough to get enough fame to become illustrious and that is the final requirement we have to found a new kingdom everything else we have apart from our level of fame being illustrious or above. So when we actually get to that point, when we become illustrious, this box will be ticked just here. All the requirements will be met. This box will light up and we will indeed be able to gather the realm, which sounds very marvelous indeed. So that's where we find ourselves right now, attempting to pick up loads of prestige to increase our level of fame to illustrious. We're currently distinguished. So we only need to get ourselves about 800 more prestige. 800 more prestige will push us through to illustrious and then that will allow us to become a king and then we can go shopping for a very fancy new hat. So to try and get some easy prestige, we have said we will join in on the crusade for the kingdom of Syria. So yeah, this is the latest Catholic Great Holy War. I mean, there's been quite a lot of these now. The popes do love a bit of a holy war. So yeah, the next one coming up is in Syria. We are joining in. So we'll get a share of the war chest if we win. And I'm saying, yeah, if we win. I mean, yeah, the odds are stacked in the favor of Catholicism there. 18,000 troops versus their 5,000. So it's looking pretty good for Pope Squad. So if we win, and I'm saying if, because, you know, they might 
might have some you know, tricks up their sleeve. They might have loads of troops or allies or whatever. But uh, yeah, if we win, we'll get some sort of a share of the war chest. So we'll get some prestige from the war chest and gold and piety and all that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, that'll be shared out between all the different people that have joined in. But we'll also just get prestige from going and fighting and stuff. So it could be really good. I think this will push us over. This will get us over the uh, 2000 mark and get us illustrious. The other thing is it starts in 13 months. So we've got just over a year to just sort of wait for a bit until the Pope says we can all go on a trip to Syria and do a little bit of fighting. So that leaves us with just over a year. And I think what we should do is I think we should just treat ourselves. We've got a nice pile of money and we've got some good money coming in as well. So I think we should treat ourselves to some upgrades around the place. Let's go and build some new things in some places or upgrade existing things. So, you know, get some better fields or some better barracks or castles and curtain walls and all that kind of stuff. However, before we go and do any building, I think there's something else that we could take a look at. And that is in here. Now, this actually came from the comment section, but it's a really good idea. Idea. So thank you comment section. Somebody in here has said that maybe we should think about resetting our perks because the avaricious tree is not that brilliant. This is not very good at all. There are many perks in here that we're just not using. They just wasted perks that are sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Like golden obligations, demand payment for hooks. That's okay, I suppose. We've never used it. So it's just sitting there not doing anything at all. I guess we could use it if we wanted a quick bit of cash, but hooks are quite useful, I suppose. Um, it is my domain can use the extort subjects decision. That sounds like a terrible idea. It sounds like something that will cause all sorts of problems and rebellions and people will hate us. Don't want to do that. Golden aplomb. Monthly income per stress level plus 10% monies. We don't have any stress level. We are very chilled out. So that's a wasted one. So those two we're never going to use. Fearful troops. Men at arms maintenance per dread. We don't have any dread. So that's three that are wasted. And this one here, at any cost, can use the sell titles decision. Why would we want to do that? Unless we were in an absolutely desperate position. It takes us ages to get titles. I don't want to sell them on. So there's four there that are doing completely nothing at all. They're just doing nothing. I mean that as well. Monthly income whilst we're at war plus 10%. We're not at war that often. And it's quite useful I suppose. Yes, it you know, pays for your troops and stuff. But I mean that's not doing anything right now either. So we've got one, two, three, four, five perks that are doing completely and utterly nothing. So I think... I think we can do this. We should reset our perks so we get everything back. We'll get all of those perks and that one there given back to us. We do have a bit of a stress hit. It will give us 50 stress, but right now we're utterly chilled out. We are very, very calm right now. So yes, I think we can do some bits and bobs to get rid of some stress as well. So I think that's probably worth doing just so we can get some better things. I mean, administrator is quite good. That's very, very good. Likeable, direct vassal opinions going up, and yeah, liege opinions not so important. But you know, large levies, vassal levy contribution up by 20%. Honoured to serve, powerful vassal council tax contribution. So any powerful vassals that are on our council, they give us 20% extra tax and 20% extra levies. I mean, I know for sure we've got two. And then toe the line. Vassals are less likely to join independence factions. So that is really, really good. I would like to get this in. And also, if we get down here, if we can just get this here, that would also be quite useful. We could try and work toward building construction times down and that there, building construction cost down, that would also be handy. If we're going to go and build some stuff, we might as well build it cheaper. So let's do this. Let's reset our perks. So we've lost that trait. We've stressed ourselves out a little bit, but we now have 10 stewardship perks. So do we want to go down? I like this. I do like popular figurehead. Popular opinion up plus 50. That is very, very good. That's good as well. The building construction time coming down by 30%. Let's get all of these. I quite like administrator. You get diplomacy plus one, stewardship plus three, and your vassal opinion goes up by five. Let's get all of these done. So meritocracy is a bit pointless. Chains of loyalty, domestic affairs efficiency up by 25%. That could be useful. Large levies, vassal levy contribution up by 20%. Thank you. Likeable. So our direct vassals like us. And then, yeah, we haven't got a leash. So don't need to worry about that. Soon forgotten. That's a bit of a wasted one monthly tyranny down. Don't really care. Positions of power. Our councillors will really like us if we put them onto the council. So that's very good. Toe the line. They're less likely to join independence factions. Honoured to serve. This is the big one. This is very good. So there we go. Powerful vassals are going to give us a lot more stuff if they are on the council. And we'll make sure that we get as many of them as we can on the council. So thank you very much. And we'll take administrator. Absolutely. So there we go. 
we've become an administrator, and now we have one more. So let's go for cutting cornerstones. Building construction cost is down a little bit, which is marvellous. And yeah, we're trying to work down the architect tree. And now, a little bit stressed out, which is okay. But now, we've got ourselves a whole load of new perks, which is wonderful. We've now got, yeah, stewardship of 21 which is a little bit better than it was before. And um, yeah, we can go and get some stuff built for a little bit cheaper, which is wonderful. So where's generating a little bit less? Nottingham, Nottingham, Nottingham. You've only got two things. Would you like something else? Uh, what about hunting grounds? That gives us a bit of extra tax and cavalry does some more damage and they're better at pursuing. So yeah, okay, let's give you some hunting grounds. They're relatively cheap as well. They're not too expensive. Um, and Leicester, what would you like? Is it worth upgrading your bastions and curtain walls through to a bailey so we get another little bit of money an extra 0.2 per month which is okay and the fort level goes up and the garrison goes up and the supply level goes up yeah okay let's do that it's 213 and i think we've got enough for one more who who should we spoil i mean northamptonshire has a lot going for it it generates a lot of money it's got a lot of levies what about warwick what about warwick over here let's upgrade your thing as well let's upgrade you to a bailey so yeah, you get a bit more tax, a bit more fort level. Yeah, okay, there you go. Lovely. So we spent a bit of money. We spent less than we would have done had we not rejigged our perks. We have taken a little bit of stress because yeah, we've had to rewire our entire brain <laughs> to acknowledge all these new things that we now suddenly understand all at once. But, uh, but yeah, it's fine. We've got 50 stress. We can work on that. Okay, right. A few things just happened there in relatively quick succession. So I think maybe the English heard what we said. I think the English heard what we were saying about Winchester and the fact that it's a bit rubbish because the English capital has moved over here and now Norwich is the capital of England, which, which is fine. Well done, Norwich. You are the realm capital. That's very impressive. And you have a fort level of six. I mean, maybe, maybe I should have whispered that about this place down here because, yeah, they've obviously realised that place is, it was just awful. It was really easy access for us. And it was just terrible. We could siege it so very quickly. So they've moved over there to a place with a fort level of six, which does make it a little bit better. It makes it a bit better for them. It makes it harder for everyone else. So, okay, so they've moved their capital around. And unfortunately, yes, our um, our bishop has died. So Marl Swain has died. And we have a new bishop who is Matthias von Parchim, who does not endorse us, which is not particularly convenient for us because that means that, yes, we do not get his levies and we do not get his gold contributions from all of the sort of religious holdings. So we need to do something about that. The other thing is we're trying to sway... Uh, the troublesome Earl Hrodbert. How about two months? Two months' time, that'll finish. We'll see whether that works. So we'll see whether we can sway Hrodbert. And then whatever happens, if we do or we don't, we'll then switch that over to try and sway our bishop. Although, although we do have a bit of money. We've got a little tiny bit of money. How about, how about, how much does he want for, uh, how much would he get sort of uh, increase if we paid him? 150 money gives us 33 opinion. Okay, that's probably okay. That's, do you know what, let's do it. Let's do it, absolutely. Boom, there we go. So we spend a bit of money on, I mean, it's a send gift. It's a bribe, it's a bribe. We bribed the guy to like us. We sent him some nice shiny trinkets, maybe a nice new hat. Uh, there you go, Frodbert is not swayed, so stop doing that because he's sort of okay anyway with us. And um, yeah, let's try and sway him anyway. Let's make sure that he really likes us. Oh, and 90% success chance in 10 months' time. Okay, that's fine. But we need to get that done pretty soon because, yes, the uh, crusade starts in eight months and we could do with, obviously, all of his troops and all of his money coming to us. Oh, and this is wonderful. So our marshal has given the earldom of Penlyn over there some martial guidance, which means that popular opinion of us has gone up by plus 50 in the county of Penlin. That is absolutely brilliant. So our current popular opinion is plus 70 with them. Wow. Okay, that is very, very impressive. Good job, Marshall. Well done. And what is this? Lord Cordaff's inherited contract obliges him to more than you have collected. Who are you? You are, are you one of our vassals? Yes, you are. Ah, you're, okay, you're from over there. Can we move that out of the way? You're from over here. Um, do you know what? If he only owns... If he only owns that one place, if we say, yes, taxes to us are increased, he's, we're not going to get much from one, one county. So how about we let it slide and we get a hook on him? There we go. So we now have a hook on that chappy there. And what's that? 
uh, mercenary contract so contract things ex they're sort of expiring that's fine absolutely not bothered they can just go away they did their job and now they can depart and you know go and get hired by someone else i suppose and we have been called to war by our irish allies okay so they are attacking so it's in a, a sort of an offensive war hang on hang on when do we start the crusade in a month well you have picked your time well haven't you okay <laughs> okay right maybe we could go and do the crusade and then come back and help Ireland out a little bit. I mean, could you have done this either in about a year's time or about a year ago? That would have been perfect. Uh, okay, do you know what? Do you know what if we decline? We lose 350 fame. No, it, we can't decline. That's what we're trying to save up. So that would be a disaster. So, okay, fine. So we're getting, what are we getting? The Earldom of Ilek. Oh, the place up there. Ah, yeah, that's, that's Scottish, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So they're trying to get that back. Yes. Okay, fine. I mean, how about, how about we go, if we sort of set our troops up, I don't know, up here somewhere, pop them over there, then they can walk around there, go across the little crossing bit and walk over here and take this place. And if we capture this, that means, you know, the war score starts ticking up for our friends, the Irish, and then we can go and join in the crusade. How about that? How about that for a deal, everybody? Right, hang on. Where's our sort of our sort of uh, gathering sort of point thingamajig? Right, put you. I don't know. There'll do. That'll do the job. And okay, let's just go and check what's going on. Who is fighting who? So there is us on our side. So there's Ireland. There is us, and we're just against Scotland. That's it. No allies coming in. It looks. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good for our side. Okay, let's raise some armies. And a few days to gather everybody. Yeah, everyone's going to be in one big kind of unit at the minute. Do you know what? That's fine for now. That's absolutely fine for now. Um, Prince Bertha Fried of the Holy Roman Empire has joined this war. That is somewhat worrying. Okay. You're not actually the main Holy Roman Empire person, though, are you? That would be worrying. No. No, you're not. You've got 334 people. I thought you were, like, in charge of the Holy Roman Empire or something. <laughs> I thought that might have been a problem. Okay, no, it's fine. Okay, get... Oh, no, hang on. Where's our army? Army, where are you? I've left you behind. Uh, yeah, get over there. Get over there and get that place as soon as you can, please. Don't know how long that's going to take. Two months. So by that point, the thing will have started. Ooh, hang on. Hang on. Can we go up here and have a fight with some Scottish troops? We might catch them, possibly. The only thing is, they are in... Yeah, they're defending in hills. No, let's go over here. Let's stick to the original plan. Go over that way. If they want to follow us, they can. Don't know exactly where they are going. Ah, no, I think they're in another war. They're in a war against Duke uh, Kernakan, possibly. Oh, in a liberty war. Ah, so they've got a little bit of um, a little bit of sort of internal difficulties going on, which means we can just come over here and grab this nice and quick. In fact, the Irish are already over there doing that. Can we can we belay those orders? Can we go back here? Oh, no, we're going to cross. The <laughs> we're going to sail across there and then sail all the way back again. Um, yeah, go on, then. It's fine. It's a bit of a waste of time, but it's OK. There we go. And the crusade is underway. The music rises. It's all very exciting. Inflamed by righteous fury and yielding resolve, which is that's wonderful. That is wonderful language. Uh, the great army of crusaders assembled by Pope Sergius sets forth to deliver divine justice upon the wicked and earn their place in heaven. OK, right. We'll be with you momentarily. Please hold the line. Hang on a second. Um, ah, right. And our contract with the, um, the, the mercenaries has ran out. I think our commander was their leader. Oh, okay. We don't have the best commanders. Um, okay. Can we call in some knights who might also be very good commanders? Is that something that we can do? Let's give it a go. So knights, invite knights. In fact, we've got 27, 20, 18, 15. Hang on, hang on. Rodbert is up there. Yep, we're forcing him to fight. Um, we could do with getting couple more decent knights yeah okay we'll invite the knights it costs 150 prestige that's fine it doesn't dent our fame it's prestige that number there so it's all okay so yeah all right let's see if we can find any knights and we'll go back we'll siege galloway when we get back over the <laughs> back over the water we there we go right this is familiar we came this way before um this one at the front with the map and everyone going oh, i told you i told you we should have gone left okay hang on so what's this so thurfrith has arrived and 
he is immediately very, very good. Yes, please, we'll have the Frith of Norfolk, please. Uh, yeah, we'll recruit you. 35 of your monies, thank you very much. Are you a knight? I would like to think you would go and be a knight. The Frith? The Frith. You're quite knighty. Go and, go and do knight things. Why is he not being a knight? I thought he'd be immediately thrown in there, but, but no. Okay, no. Force him in, please. And then also, he... Uh, have we got any siege people, in fact? Have we got anyone that can do sieging? Um, it does not look like we have. That is a very sad state of affairs. Okay, and then, yeah, let's get him in, because he's got the better sort of martial skill. So I don't know if it'll affect sieges, but if we get attacked, it's better to have him kind of in charge of the army. Oh, this is all very, very unfortunate. The Scots are going over there. The Irish have failed to siege that place in time, and the Irish are outnumbered. However, we are 20 days away from taking this place here to get at least a bit of war score on the go. Oh no, run Ireland, run. Hang on, we'll come over in a second. We'll come over in a second. Okay, we've won Galloway. Yay, well done. Right, come over here. Let's have a bit of a fight then. I mean, it's going to take us ages to get over here. It's going to take us a long time. And we've, we've promised the Pope that we're going to go and help him. Um, ah, okay, Elfwyn. This is our daughter who we could never educate because she was always wandering around. Oh, now she's come back. Um, so she's got Thrifty Clark. Okay, not brilliant, but it could be worse. So what does that do to you? I've got 19 stewardship, which is very, very good indeed. That's very impressive. Good job. Right, let's get these people over the water. Ah, and we get ourselves a new perk. Do we want, yeah, professional workforce, just to speed up the construction of those buildings. That could be quite handy. So uh, yeah, we'll take that. Uh, right, let's get everybody across here. Let's go and have a fight because yeah, the Irish are being slightly murdered. So let's go and let's go and take down some Scottish troops. Oh, well, this is entirely, entirely unexpected. Oh, Rodber here has said, hey, let's not be rivals. Absolutely, I will not be a rival with you. I don't like having rivals. Rivals equals problems and potential to get murdered a bit. So there we go. Petty King offer with our difference in the past. But don't you agree it's time to let bygones be bygones? So yeah, okay, we'll stop being a rival. So he's just going to be, yeah, hang on, if we look at relationships, yeah, he's he's not our friend in any way, but yeah, he now you know, hates us a little bit less, which is quite good. And yeah, we've gone up here instead of, instead of taking them on, instead of taking the, um, the Scottish troops on, we've gone up here. We'll siege this place, and I'd like to think they might come and try and stop us. Because, um, yeah, we're, we're getting this place relatively quick. I like that we'll be able to siege this place quite nicely. So hopefully they'll come up here and try and attack us. But we're in hills and we're defending. No, we're not defending. No, it's their territory. Oh, okay. I don't know if that'll work. We'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. But at least if we get this, that starts the war score ticking up. And um, our ward, Sainsworth. That was our, yeah, that was our cousin. Uh, oh, she's she's not particularly brilliant, but okay, she's got some sort of military skills. Okay, good job, well done, you go and do some stuff somewhere. Oh, what are the Irish doing? The Irish just keep standing around, they keep trying to go into the sea, and then the Scottish forces just catch them up and then just chop them into tiny bits. Yeah, oh, crikey, yeah, I don't know if they took quite a bit of damage there, that's, that's not good. They have, however, injured the Scottish troops quite a bit. They've gone down quite a lot there. That might give us a chance. Um, okay, right, hang on a minute. Demetrios. Demetrios, a good loyal Demetrios. He's been in our service for absolutely ages. He must be getting on a bit now. 63. So yeah, okay, he's he's you know, he's getting on. Um, let's go and promote culture in Ooh, we've got what three places left that need to go to Anglo-Saxon. Um, Penlin, there you go. We'll put you with the marshal again. I think you've sort of uh, you know, sort of done some joint work with her before, so why not? Right, I think we're just about to capture this place. Right, so we have ourselves the actual war goal. Let's go over here and see if we can't have a fight with the Scottish now. If we can just win a couple of fights there, that might be quite handy. And then we could go over and help out with... No, they're kind of running away a bit. Don't... Come come back. Come back here, you troublemakers. So then, yeah, we'll have a bit of a fight with them. Hopefully we can win. Oh, we're being completely carved apart. Now, our greater numbers might see us through, but this is not going to do very well for our, for our living sort of number of soldiers. I think we might have lost quite a few just there. Um, yeah, we lost 1,358 people. I also notice that we are lacking a council position. Oh no, it's Demetrios. <laughs> oh, Demetrios, just as I was saying how long you've been in our service and checked your age, you've gone and carelessly dropped dead. Um, oh, 
Okay, right. Well, that's that's you sorted then. Right, okay, hang on a minute, council. Let's get somebody else in. Who's really good at doing that? Um, ah, this chap here, he's got 20. Have we got any strong vassals that want to do it? Powerful vassals. You, but you've only got a stewardship of 11, which is... Oh, no, you're Rodbert anyway. So you're fine. So, yeah, none of our other ones are any good. So uh, we can just pick this guy here. He's a lord. He might appreciate being on the council. So, yeah, let's put him on. Let's put him on. He's still very good. So, yeah, okay, you can come in four years to uh, get this sort of uh, culture converted. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Right, what's going on with all of the fighting stuff? I think we yeah, we obviously won that fight there. So, how is it looking? Plus 34%. Right, Ireland, are you going to be okay if we go and join in a holy war now? Are you going to be all right? Because the holy war doesn't look like it's going very well. The, the Pope might need our wonderful support. I mean, this place is yours. The war score is ticking up quite nicely because that is the war target. So are you going to be OK if we just, you know, go a bit now? Oh, this is huge. This is huge news indeed. Our councillor, Hrodbert, has died from his internal injuries. Now, you see, the thing is, now I feel a bit bad. Now I feel a little bit bad because he came to us and he said, hey, let's not be a rival anymore. Let's be friends. Let's be buddies. Bury the hatchet and all that kind of stuff. We went, yes, I agree. Let's not be rivals anymore. By the way, you're not very good at fighting, but out onto the front line with you. And we forced him to go and fight. And now, now he is dead. I mean, it does remove. He, 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 was, a, he was a thorn in our side. He was a pain. So that's removed him out of the equation because... I, we, you know, we never really trusted him. He was a little bit of a shady character. So, okay, right. Another council position needs to be filled. Um, is there anybody that's a powerful marshal that would like to do that? Countess Eleanor. However, she is our marshal right now. So, hang on a minute. She's only got a marshal of 12. Hang on. Have we got anybody else that could fill that role a bit better? Ah, yeah. The new chappy. The new chappy. He's got a marshal of 19. He's very good. Any of the strong vassals that want the marshal job? No. Okay, so how about then we move Countess Eleanor over with 16 intrigue, which is pretty good. I mean, the thing is, our niece has got 21. She's got 21 intrigue. Do we put her in? But then we could get somebody. We could improve both our marshal and our spymaster. So let's reassign you over to there. You go and do spying things. And then in terms of Marshall, how about we have you? 19. 11 years. 11 years to get to get Penlin back under control. Good grief. What has happened to the people of Penlin that it's going to take that long? Okay, so we've got some supply issues going on because, yes, we're in one place. There's quite a lot of people. So we're going to split the army in half. And then, yeah, we just want to grab one lot of you. You can go over there. So there you go. When you've sort of parted, you can then top up your supply. So go and grab, I don't know, a load of bread or whatever it is you need to do. I'm not sure. So you can get your supplies up. We should hopefully tick up to 100 for both of you, I imagine. Yep, splendid. Right. The war over here is looking pretty good. Oh no, Scotland of... <sighs> Ireland. Ireland, what are you doing? R Ireland, we've got to go and help the Pope. We've got to go and help the Pope out a little bit. And also, if we do that, we get a trait as well. So we're going to go and help the Pope. I mean, all we need to do is join in a little bit and do maybe a bit of sieging. But we're not going to be able to take on all those Scottish forces with just 4,000 people here. Um... No, Ireland, you're going to have to... This, you're just very silly. Why don't you just go over there and defend that place? It would have been brilliant. We'll come back and help you in a bit, Ireland. Just, just hold fire, hold fire. Wait a year or so. Right, you two. Two armies. Get over here. Let's go and join in the fighting. Um, okay, yeah, it looks... There's hardly any enemy... Are there any enemy troops anywhere? Or have they all been horribly murdered? Right, how about then we head over... Where exactly are we fighting? What's the what's the territory we're looking for? So this bit is, yeah, if we go up there and capture some of that territory, that could be quite handy. So yeah, head over there, please. No, that, that, no, hang on. Where's our armies? Right, grab our armies. I'll, I'll tell them to go over there. I'll, I'll give them their orders. Okay, minor change of plan. A lot of the enemy have just appeared over here. There's quite a lot of them, particularly over here in this great big sort of doom stack of units. So maybe we need to come down here and just sort of join forces with the Pope. So we'll head over that way, I think. So, yep, yeah, you there and you here. We'll come over this way. It looks like as well, are they not sieged? 
Do we not want to siege these places? I suspect that might be quite useful. Uh, oh yeah, we won a battle then. Yay. Right, here we go. So we're going to be getting disembarked, which is quite good. We are going to be having a fight, and that's not good for us, given that we've just disembarked. But yeah, there's quite a lot of us, and we are going to chop and chop them apart. Okay, wonderful. I mean, that's just a literally just landing <laughs> on the beach going, hey guys, oh crikey, there's a lot of people here. Um, Hang on a second. What is going on there with that 18,000 strong thing just there. That That's worrying. That's a little bit disturbing, isn't it? Can we come down here and join in with these 11,000 people? That would be nice. Hey guys, how about we all stick together? It sounds brilliant. I mean, okay, Pope Squad are down there doing a good job. We don't want to go near those. Where, where's everyone going? Why are you all split? Where are you guys going? Don't go into the sea. There's 19,000 angry people over here that want to chop us into tiny bits. Um, okay, if we go over there... Those 19,000 have come back, but there's 10,000 just there. Where is, where's Pope Squad going? Can we go over there? We could join in here. That is Pope Squad and um, some other places, the Petty King of Brittany. Oh, okay, that's exciting. If they're all going to go there and there's going to be a fight, we could try and join in as best we could. Oh no, we, we've caught them beforehand. We've caught them beforehand. So we can chop these guys up, but these guys up here are becoming a little bit dead. They are being killed somewhat. There we go. We've got a load of people. It's got lots of people on our side. So there we go. And, oh. Oh, hang on a minute. Have we got there already? We are illustrious. Now, I bet we can't do this whilst we're fighting. No. No. We're at war. So we can't do this whilst we're at war. How is the uh, Irish war going? Um, let's have a quick check. <laughs> Ireland, what are you doing? Have you got that place? No, you've let them siege it from under you. Oh, Ireland. Hang on. Wait a little while. We'll come back and help you. We're trying to get in over here to help out this thing here. And here we go. What's this? Oh, no. This is... We've got a trait. Ah, we get the Crusader trait. Yes, because we've joined in. So plus two martial. All was very nice. Plus one prowess. Same faith opinion plus 15. That's very good. That is very good. So lots of people will like us from that. That's great. And clergy opinion up plus 15 as well, which is lovely. Okay, Miss and George lead us to victory indeed. And we're going in here, which means that now there's quite a lot of people against not quite so many people. So yeah, we probably should win that war. They keep pouring people in. They keep throwing people in. But I rather suspect it is going to go our way. And yeah, those numbers go down very slowly. There's so many people. There we go. Victory. Victory for Pope Squad. Right, can we go and claim some territory now? Can we claim some territory? Because it seems to me that we've done a bit of fighting, which only goes plus six percent. We need to go and we need to go and claim some actual territory. That would be really handy. Ah, good. People are on it over there. Good job. I mean, that's like some sort of capital. Why don't we head over there? That is the capital of this particular place, the county of Jouer. So yeah, there we go. We'll head over there, try and capture that. Hopefully some people might come with us. And our vassal Earl Rodbird who I thought was a bit dead, to be honest. Are you not dead? Oh my goodness me. He's, he's come, but he's just, he's just regenerated into a younger self. <laughs> what is this? Oh, and he's a murderer. Oh, well, aren't you a delight? Right. So this guy here, who is a murderer, has created the Liberty Faction against us. I mean, I suppose we deserve it a bit. We did force his dad to go into combat as a knight and get killed. Oh, and he's a powerful vassal. Well, of course he is. So, yeah, he doesn't like us. Do you know what? We could sway him. We stopped swaying the priest guy because we couldn't do it anymore. Let's try and sway him to make him less inclined to kill us. It's all going a bit wrong over an island, however. Our Irish allies are struggling without us, it seems. They're not having the best time of it. Minus 74% war score for Ireland. I'm sorry, Ireland. I'm really sorry. Just, just, just cling on, all right? Cling on. And in amidst all of this war going on, we get ourselves a perk, which is nice. We'll take centralization. So development growth in the realm capital goes up by 0.3 a month. Only because tax man is a bit useless right now because we're not actually collecting taxes. So yeah, we'll go for a bit of centralization. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going over here. We're trying to take this place. Both of our sort of armies are actually on this. I think we're slowly, we've got a bit of attrition going on. Our supplies are, we're okay. We're well supplied. I think, could we now, hang on, could we, could we get you both merged back together? Or is that going to be bad? 
Is that going to be a bad thing? Maybe we'll leave them separate for now. It's okay. They're still sort of here in one sort of group. So that's not so bad. And um, yeah, we'll move time on. Let's get this place sieged over here. It is slowly ticking up. It's slowly ticking up. Nobody wants to siege this place, however. As soon as an enemy comes near, everyone runs away. It'd be really handy if we could get this place under our control. Because that means, yeah, we're going to control more territory. And yeah, it's going to be eventually part of the war target. So we obviously get a ticking war score going up if we can control the war target. But uh, yeah, they seem a little bit hesitant to do so. Uh, okay, do you know what? If no one else is doing it, we'll go and do it. Oh, I'm really sorry, Island. I'm very, very sorry. I mean, I did do a lot of the legwork on that. I did so much stuff. I mean, maybe, maybe you shouldn't have timed it just as there was a lovely crusade coming by. Um, so yeah, there we go. Scotland have won, Ireland have lost. And the Irish chappy then, uh, I assume he loses his claim on that place, I imagine. He loses his claim. And we got, oh, we did get 400 prestige from it anyway, did we? Oh my goodness me, we're, we're flying through illustrious. We're almost a thousand through illustrious. Okay, so be it. Uh, right, okay, so there we go. Well, one less thing to worry about. At least now we don't have to worry about this war down here. And it's looking pretty good. It looks like they are slowly moving up here and taking all of these places. So, right, we've got that siege done, which is wonderful. It's up to 84%. 84%. I mean, are there any enemies around? Doesn't look like it. Um, okay, let's go to just there and take that place. It's on a plus 100%. It's on plus 100%. And we've won. Tis glorious. St. George has granted Queen Maud. Queen Maud of... <gasps> Our... Our sister is a queen. Oh my goodness me. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. Okay, we won the war. We won the war. Hang on. What was our thing? Maud Cupboard got the kingdom of Syria. Oh my goodness me. We were we were first. We contributed more than anybody else. We didn't arrive until relatively late. Our war chess score, we got 928 gold. We got 1,600 prestige. <laughs> And we got 384 piety. Weirdly enough, for a holy war, we get you know, a surprisingly small amount of piety. But there we go. Maybe the Pope's running out of that. He needs to you know, go down the shop and get some more. Um, oh my goodness me. Oh, this is, this is wonderful. Okay, so St. George is with us. St. George has granted Queen Maud victory in the Crusade for Syria. After defeating Zaven or Zavan as heathen warriors on several occasions, our warriors forced the enemies of the faith to admit their ignominious defeat. Okay. Here we go. Oh my goodness me. So we do actually finally have ourselves a queen in the Cupboard Dynasty. We've got ourselves a sort of you know, a king-queen level person, but it's not us. It is not us. And there we go. It is you. St. George is with us. We'll say yes to that, which, I mean, that's a lot of stuff we just got. A new kingdom. With the establishment of a proper Catholic queen in Syria, the faithful could finally rest easy. You know, the St. George is smiling upon our good works. Okay. I wonder what kind of ruler she will be. You'll play as Queen Maud. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. No, go back to our realm. We'll leave Queen Maud. Queen Maud. Oh, what's that going to do to our renown? We've, we've got a king. Well, it says one king. A little bit incorrect. Queen. But we've got ourselves a queen. Oh, this is glorious. This is wonderful. A crusader queen. Okay, go back to our realm. And I think she's going to be pretty good at sorting that out. I think she's going to be really good at sorting this place out. She's very very capable. She has a martial skill of 26 and truces with all of the people and 10 more besides. Wow. That is wonderful. Okay. Oh, hang on. Has someone else got something? Maud was given the kingdom of Syria. Who are you? Radwald. You're our cousin. You've been given the Duchy of Aleppo. So we've got a queen and a duke. Oh, that was brilliant. Okay, that worked out very well indeed. I mean, okay, we, we might have annoyed our Irish friends with that. Hang on a minute, hang on, hang on. How are, how are Ireland? We're going to sort out ransoms in a bit. Hang on, I know there's ransoms going on, it's fine. Um, Ireland, do you like us? Plus 100. Oh, that's fine. Contributed in one of my wars, plus 95. I mean, yeah, I did pretty much all of it, but okay. Um, okay, disband our troops. Yes, so the money's coming back in. There it is. There it is, the decision is available. Oh, this is very exciting. This is very exciting indeed. So here it is. Found a new kingdom. The button is available. Our level of fame is illustrious. I mean, it's almost all the way along to the next thing. We're 2,629 fame points into illustrious. We are very, very illustrious. We're an independent ruler. We are at least one of these. We hold three duchies. And yeah, we've got the money, we've got the prestige, and we've got the piety. 
We can indeed gather our realm right now. But you know what? Dukov is not going to do that right now. He wants to go and do something else. We are going to wait four months. In four months' time, divine right will become known to us. And that means we can press several of our claims in a single war, which is very, very handy indeed. And that means if we go and look here... Now, I notice as well with interest that England have moved their capital back to the poorly, tragically defended Winchester down here, which only has some homesteads in it. It's got nothing else. What are you doing down here? Come on, sort this out. But, uh, but yeah, if we go and look here and go and say, hello, we'd like to declare war on you, please. And we've got various claims. You know, Alfgar's got a bit of a claim on Dorset down there. Countess Eleanor's got a bit up here. And Athel Swift has got a bit in there. But we also have some claims. We've got claims on the duchy of that place that no one can pronounce, and also the earldom of Oxfordshire. However, if we just wait four months' time, we could then have a bit of a fight for these. We claim those. They will be the final additions to the wonderful Kingdom of Cupboard. At the moment, we control half of that duchy, and that's just really irritating. So it'd be quite nice if we could get that in. So I think we wait. We wait until the secrets of divine right are ours, and then we can go and do that. Uh, ah, good. Good. There's no more heretics. That is wonderful. Right, we want to go and do that again somewhere else. Over there, Kamarthenshire. Yep, yeah, they've started you know, practicing that other religion. We don't want that anymore. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait a little while. This also gives us a chance to build up our troops. Because, yeah, we did take a little bit of a kick in over there. So, yeah, we just want our troops to build up nice and quick. Yeah, that number's going up quite nice. And how many have England got? Now, England are in a war. They are in a war with Scotland. So, England are distracted. This could be perfect. Is he going to care? Is King Simon going to care? And there we go. We have ourselves divine right. This is wonderful. Ooh. And she is converted from Welsh to Anglo-Saxon. This is all going so well. It's all going brilliantly well. Uh, okay, right. Let's pick another thing to research. What do we actually want to get? I mean, trebuchets. Trebuchets could be really, really handy. At the moment, we're going to discover them in 17 years. If we click that, that's eight years. We're not the brightest. I mean, Duke T would have that done by tomorrow. He'd have that done by tomorrow morning. And also, you know, he'd have windmills as well. Yeah, that could be good. Windmills is good. Windmills is quite handy. That allows us to upgrade loads of extra bits and bobs. I think that's all our sort of economy stuff. So all the towns and stuff can be upgraded. But trebuchets are going to be really handy. Get some trebuchets. Cause some more siege damage. Get sieges done quicker. Yeah, let's get some trebuchets done. That seems like a very offerish thing to do there. You know, his dad started working on divine right. So, um, so yeah, he's going for something a little bit more sort of... A little bit more fighty there. And, okay, do we go to war now? Where are England? Can't see any English troops. Who's involved in that war? Who is involved in that particular fight? So it's it's England and a chap from Hungary. Okay, the King of Hungary. A chap from Hungary. The King of Hungary, I should say. There you go. Um, and, oh, hang on. Didn't mean to do that. Hang on. Where's the war thing? Uh, against, so yeah, Scotland and you and there's a few people there's a few people but yeah we could just go straight in we could just go straight in right now and just get this done go down here siege this place again get a, hopefully a, a nice prisoner yeah let's do that let's give it a go we've got 8180 troops he's got 6656 we could if we wanted to get some mercenaries in that could be very handy okay yeah let's do it right where's our sort of rally point rally point Back down here. Back to Stonehenge. It's nice down this part of the world. Okay. Hello. Hello, King Simon. Would you like a bit of a war? And yeah, look, now, now we get both of them. We could pick one if we wanted to, but that's a bit silly. So yes, we will absolutely take the Earldom of Oxfordshire and that, please. However, hang on, hang on, hang on. Do we not have a claim on this? Do we not have a claim on this? Hang on, hang on. Can you do that there? No, we don't have a claim on Berkshire. We will take it as part of the duchy. Um, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, we'll, we'll, let's just get on with it. Let's just go and have a bit of a fight. Hello. We would like to take the duchy of that place. Huiche, Huichi, Huichi, however you pronounce it. And also Oxfordshire. I can pronounce that one. Yes. Declare war. They could call in their allies, but I think we could do this really quickly. We've got allies of our own that we could summon in. They do have some, but yeah, they're already engaged in combat somewhere else. So we could do this nice and quick. Get down there. Get a good prisoner. 
go and see some of the places. Take, obviously, these places here. War score ticks up. Beautiful. Yeah, okay. Let's have a bit of war. Hello. Like to have a bit of a fight with you, please. Come over here. Raise some troops up. Take a little while to gather. Boom. And go straight in. Straight into the capital. Lots of people are joining in. Right, hang on. Might need to go and ask my friends. Hello. <laughs> would you like to come and have a bit of a fight? Of course you would. You'd love a scrap. Um, and then we've got an alliance through here as well. Can we call you? You're too far away. Okay, never mind. Never mind. We'll get our Irish friends in. Here we go. They've joined in. So that means we've got ourselves a bit of support. And then, yeah, look at this, this rubbish place. We'll siege it in no time at all. And there are our Irish allies coming in. Hello, Ireland. I'm really sorry you lost that last war. We'll try and work on that. Right, did we get anybody? We got King Simon's daughter and his... Oh, we got two daughters. They're worth entirely nothing except possibly some money. Oh, we might have some prisoners. We might possibly have some prisoners that we might want to let out. Yeah, these people have been here for a long time. You've been there for three years. I apologise in advance. And You've been there for a long time. You're the Prince of Scotland. Hang on, hang on. Could we do something better with you? Why has no one come asking for the Prince of Scotland back? I thought maybe someone might have gone, do you know what? I quite like the Prince of Scotland. Can he please be let out to play? Uh, we'll take 100 money. Thank you. Um, you've been in prison for two years. Yep. You will just convert you. That's fine. Uh, you're not accepting that. Oh, okay. Hook? Yeah, okay. Uh, we don't want you, do we? No, we don't want you. Okay, bye-bye. Get out of the prison, cheerio. Hugh. Hello, Hugh. Uh, no, we don't want you either. We'll just get a hook on you for some reason. There we go. Uh, you're two years. Uh, well, you're already considering an offer. And you, ten gold. Thank you. Seven months. Oh, someone else is waiting for you. Okay, fine. We'll sort out some more people. Right, we've got this. That's now taken. Um, okay, let's go to the actual sort of war targets and get those. Okay, our Irish buddies have gone over there. They are sieging Oxford. We are sieging Reading. And it looks like some people from the Duchy of Man have come in. They're stood next to Northampton, but there's not enough of them to siege Northampton. They're just sort of stood there. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, we've got a dead body of a commoner. Yeah, we can launch it toward whoever that person is. Who are you? Beg Sullivan. Why do you not like us? I don't know. Are you in our prison, possibly? Have we annoyed you? Yeah, I don't really care about you. Um, studying corpses for five years. Learning plus two. That could be quite good. There's only a 10% chance that someone in our court gets ill. That is a bit more learning, which means we might get research done a bit quicker. Yeah, let's have a go for that and hope nobody catches a terrible, terrible viral disease. And Reading is about ready to fall. That gets us up to 37. Uh, okay, do you know what, Ireland? We'll come in and help you. We'll stand here and sort of get on with this a little bit because we might as well. Uh, and then we'll go up and chop those guys apart because they're just irritating. They're just annoying the people of Northampton. They just have to kind of get by these people who are stood there looking up at Northampton. Um, and some people are married. That's very exciting. Jolly good. Uh, oh, hang on. No, that that's the Irish alliance, isn't it? That's the Irish Alliance. Oh, yeah, that's quite good. Yeah, okay, splendid. That's very exciting. Good, good, good. And, ah, good. So, Chappie has sorted out culture. So, yeah, okay, go down to Gwent. Sort that out, please. And we've almost taken that place. Splendid. Right, let's go up there, then. Let's see if we can fight the armies of the Duchy of Man. All, like, five of them or whatever. I think we might catch them up. Bit of a choppity, choppity apart moment. And I think, I think they might lose. I think they, yeah, it was, oh, it was close. Okay, where else should we go? I mean, we have England down here. They don't seem to be doing anything else. So let's just take some more. I mean, what about just here? Just here looks nice. Buckingham just over the border. Let's have a bit of that. And we are going to siege Buckingham, which is wonderful. And we have ourselves a perk as well. And we're going to have to start going down here. So tax man, it's a bit pointless right now. Never mind. We are known for our dedication to our faith. Oh my goodness me. Offer. This is all going very well. We've captured Earl William of Buckinghamshire as well. This is all good. This is all gold that we can get now. Um, let's, shall we pop over to Bedford? Let's go to Bedford. It's got a lovely river. Let's go and siege that place. Okay, Bedford is going to fall and there is entirely no resistance. There's no resistance at all from England. Okay, this is us uh, having a little communication with the, the Earl Rodbert II, the, the regenerated Rodbert. Uh, okay, yeah, we're trying to sway him. I think he does like us a bit. We've been doing this a little while. Yeah, plus 43. Um, okay, so 
do we want to try and sort of uh, focus our letters on a particular topic? So diplomatic matters. He is he's quite terrible. He is very, very bad. He is he is in no way as good as his dad. I mean, his dad was... Oh, hang on. Was his dad rubbish at most things except intrigue? Oh, okay. Hang on a minute. No, that's good hat. He, he was good. Good hat was good. Um, Okay, I've got it all confused. Go back there. There we go. Um, Yeah, he's pretty rubbish. I mean, diplomatic matters. He, that's the only thing he's good at. Feats of war, definitely not. The ruling of a realm, definitely not. Uh, diplomatic matters? Should we try and talk to you about that? And we've got Bedford. This is all going very well indeed. Um, I don't know. Berkhamsted. Let's pop over there. Any English resistance at all? Do they care? Uh, okay. And yes, he he liked that. We got he got ten opinion of us just from us picking the sort of the thing that he enjoys talking about. Okay, lovely. Our sister Maud has created the Cadet Branch of Suffolk. Yeah, I don't know what the Cadet Branches do. They're still part of our. They're still part of our thing, aren't they? They're still part of our our dynasty. Uh, Maud, where are you? Maud, Maud, Maud. There you go. Queen Maud. Hello. Yeah, outranking me. I know. Not for long, Maud. Wait there. Um, so, yeah, so the Suffolk... I mean, that is... That's just terrible to look at. Oh, that's awful. It looks like grandma's curtains. Look at that. What kind of pattern is this? This is awful. But, yeah, it's still part of the Cupboard dynasty. So, although, yes, yeah, she's got this kind of... Crazy. We've got quite a few cadet branches going on, actually. Oh my goodness me, the Waltheof. Look look at what Waltheof has created. All these people just from Waltheof. Wow. So yeah, there's Good Hat over there uh, with his, his one, his sort of cadet branch thing. I mean, I don't know what they do. I don't know if they have a negative bearing or anything else, but there you go. And there's her kids and there's another cadet branch of House, House Lockhart. That is wonderful. And then House Cupboard Gwynedd, Gwynedd, uh, which is... Oh, yeah, the chap who lives in, in Brittany. Oh, my goodness me. Wow. But, yeah, okay, it's still all in our sort of dynasty, so we still get the lovely renown, of which we have a thousand. Hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Where's, where's that? Where's that? Uh, dynasty thing. Yeah, open legacies. We could... We could get ourselves a new... A new one of these. Or do we want to go for this? Do we want to go for this and get some really good traits going on? Yeah, we've got we've got a thousand things. We could we could get something. Okay, right. Let's have a look at what might be good. I do like this sort of legacy line here. I do like the blood one. This is very good. So convergent blood, chance of reinforcing congenital traits plus thirty percent. That's pretty good. Because you know if you can get good traits into all your people, then they're going to be really really super talented. That's good. And um, resilient bloodline, chance of inheriting bad congenital traits and chance of bad new congenital traits both down by 30 percent which is very good and then architected ancestry you pick a trait to become more common so you can say yeah i would like everybody to be a genius and they can all be geniuses and then octogenarians life expectancy up by five that could be very good as well the only other one that i'm well there's a few that's quite good i like that prowess up by two knight effectiveness up by 15 that could be very, very handy. And then law, this one here, popular opinion up by five because we are mostly fair. That could be really handy. That could be very, very handy. Do we get this? Do we get this now just to make us a little bit more popular around the, the realm of cupboard? That means people like us a bit more. And then we've got a queen already on the throne in the dynasty. We'll soon, hopefully, if everything goes to plan, we'll soon have a king. I'd, I'd, hopefully it'll work, hopefully it'll work. So then we can start getting some more you know, points toward this and then maybe save up and get that one. Or do we just save up now? I kind of feel like we should spend it. We've got a nice shiny thing that we could spend, but that's very good as well. That is really good night effectiveness up by 15%. Um, but that could be quite useful, just making sure that we get less rebellions and people like us more. I think we should go for this. Convergent blood. Let's save up. This would be great. Mostly fair is a nice thing to have. Popular opinion always up by plus five in all of the counties forever. Because these things apply for all of time. So that's it's useful. It's really, really nice. You know, people like us a little bit more. It could offset some damage from, you know, poor management or whatever. But this thing here is really, really handy. And popular opinion, we could... We could go here, and if we go to there, we could get popular figurehead, which I know only applies to the person that's ruling at the time. So it'll only apply to offer, and for as long as offer is alive, then yes, we get popular opinion plus 50, which is a little bit better than plus five. But yeah, it only applies for as long as he is alive and he has that perk. If he dies, that perk's not retaken, then yes, we'll lose that popular opinion. But yeah, you know, I think 
it's a lot better. Yeah, we can just do that fairly soon. Plus five is okay, but I think the other, the other sort of uh, dynasty sort of perk, I suppose, if you like, is a lot better. So we will save up. We'll save up for that. Right, how is stuff going on over here? We've got ourselves 40 odd days there. And um, yeah, there we go. Our Irish allies are doing the same as well. Spy Master has come to his grave news. Oh no. Oh, someone's plotting to kill us. Right. Hang on a second. Please hold the line. Could you please go and assist with court intrigue, wife of mine? Because we are very, very close to our goal. We're very close to becoming a king. And I do not want somebody to come and murder us mere days before we get to do that. Because <laughs> that will be bad. We control half a cheer. It's at 100%. This is wonderful. We had entirely no opposition. Oh, we did. I suppose that these guys here, the people from the Duchy of Man, have come along to stand around. Okay, we get that duchy. We get that uh, that earldom just there. This is wonderful. Okay, enforce those demands. And this, this is it. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Right, disband. Disband that. And now we can go to here. So yeah, they're now under our control. These are now under our control. We've got that duchy. It's all very splendid. So how about, how about we go to decisions, found a new kingdom. We can do this now. It is all ready for us. Level of fame, illustrious. I mean, we're getting toward exalted among men. We're independent. We've got the three or more duchies. I think we might have four, possibly. One, two, three. We've got five. We've got five. We've got a tip at the top. This is it. This is it. Offer the day is now. Let's sort it out. Let's have coronation. I mean, we did put some champagne on ice a little while ago. I thought we did. But yeah, we'll get that champagne back out because now is the time. Now is the moment. Oh, hang on. That goes away. No, I want to, I was trying to get rid of that. Here we go. Gather the realm. Let's make this happen. Let's create the independent kingdom of cupboard. It is done. We are a king. You are now a mighty king. Oh, and he's been hat shopping. He's got himself a mighty impressive crown. I have done what no one else could. I have united the lands of cupboard with those <laughs> of powers and that place that no one can say the name of. All my life I have worked for this. To call my vassals and make them swear fealty anew. Now and forever they will pay homage to me not only as their liege, but as king. King of cupboard. Oh, this... This is a glorious moment. My realm will last forever. And there it is. There it is. It is all wonderful. This is this is the kingdom of cupboard, everybody. It's no longer just an independent nation. It's a kingdom. A proper actual kingdom with its seat of power in Northampton just there. Oh my goodness me. We've done it. We've done it. Hang on. Let's just go back. Let's go back. T. T. Look. I mean, it's a bit different to your original plan. It's a little bit different, but still. Look how glorious this is. Oh, tis, tis wonderful tea. And Ethelweird as well. Yep, okay, again, bit different to what you were possibly expecting because yeah, your son rebelled a little bit. But look, it's a kingdom. Everything you and your dad worked for, your son has made happen. And it is glorious. It is mighty glorious indeed. And look at, look at the numbers up here. We've got 1,420 gold. We've got 4,000 prestige. We've got 1,200 piety. And of course, yeah, we've got quite a bit of renown. How much is coming in? 51 living members of the Cupboard Dynasty gives us one renown. Then we've got two kings giving us two, one duke giving us half, and then one count by marriage giving us 0.2. Oh, this is glorious. Oh, this is... We've worked so hard for this. We've worked very hard. We've been on crusades. We tried to pilot and it failed. We had a bit of a war down here to get this sorted. But here we go. And now, yeah, if we look here, if we go, oh no, here. So Diore, then yes, it's part of the Empire of Britannia. Then it's the Kingdom of Cupboard. And then it's the Petty Kingdom of Cupboard. So yeah, it's it, the duchy title. So yeah, it's it's that's what it is. It, it's no longer kind of English. It's not an English place. However, I do notice a bit of border, border stuff around here. Empire of Britannia, Kingdom of Cupboard, Petty Kingdom of that place. Why are the, why are the borders quite thick around there? What is that about? It can't be signifying a duchy, because that's the duchy is there. So I don't know what that's kind of indicating. I do not know. Why is there a thicker line down the middle? Okay, right, Joe. You know what? It's probably fine. I don't think we need to worry about that right now. And let's take a quick look at succession. What is going to happen? So when we die, and I hope it won't happen for a while. He's 53. He's, he's got 10 years left in him yet. He's got 10 good years. Um, also, we could switch over to the... Um, the uh, learning perking uh, sort of uh, lifestyle track thing 
and get us get us the thing that keeps us alive for longer. But what's going to happen? So, uh, Radwald will get the Kingdom of Cupboard, the Petty Kingdom of Cupboard, so that's the Duchy, the Petty Kingdom of Tea, and then Northamptonshire, Warwickshire, Leicestershire, and Nottinghamshire. Okay, so all the ones kind of in the middle. And then Ed Weird gets De Herbeth, Powys, Quichet. Oh my goodness me, he gets three. He gets three of those. Okay, that's quite a lot. And then Earldom of Furlix and Earldom of Oxfordshire. Okay, okay. Oh, and there's all sorts of stuff in here. There's many things that need to be done. We have loads of prisons. I imagine we've got so many prisons that we can ransom. We're, we're fifth in line to inherit the entire of Syria. Um, we can declare war on some people. And we are holding too many duchies. You hold more than two duchies as a king or emperor, lowering your vassal's opinion of us. Oh, oh, there's a thing we probably need to have a look at. Yes, yeah, so, because of course, they're all ours. I mean, we want to keep the petty kingdom of cupboard. We definitely want to keep that. But then yes, what do we do with the rest of them? I do not know, but this is glorious. This is glorious. This is something we've worked really hard for. And here it is, the glorious kingdom of Cupboard. All the people here, all the, the lovely hard-working Cabordians here now have a proper kingdom to live in. They don't have to go, oh yeah, it's the <coughs> petty kingdom of Cupboard. And everyone goes, did, did, what was that cough there? Did you, did you say petty and then you tried to cough to, to make sure I couldn't hear it? No, 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 it's not a petty kingdom. It's a real one. But now it really is. It really is a real kingdom. There you go. Wonderful, wonderful, hardworking, peasanty people of Cupboard. You've done it. You're in a proper kingdom and we'll, we'll do it right. We'll, we'll do you proud, good people of Cupboard. But there we go. King Offer. Oh, it's wonderful to see that as well. King Offer has done it. The kingdom is created and now it's on to the next. So it looks like, yes, we have got some admin to do. We need to do a little bit of admin. We need to sort out who can own what and how and where and all that kind of stuff. And there is something else to consider as well, because I think we want to make sure, is that one of them? Yeah, here. So we can construct duchy buildings in the capital cities of each duchy. But yeah, there's a thing here where we can't... Yeah, it has to be held by somebody. Petty kingdom of that place is not held by Earl Rodber. Somebody... Oh yeah, we've got that. So if we then give, say... The petty kingdom, if we give the duchy, sorry, yeah, if we give the duchy of, of, uh, yeah, Powys to Earl Rodbert here, who's come back, then yes, that means we can start building these fancy duchy buildings. And they're really powerful. They're really good. I mean, siege works, siege weapon effectiveness, up 20%. Sieges go a fifth quicker, which is just wonderful. So we might need to sort of try and look at that and do a little bit of you know, sort of reconciliation of what we've got and who's looking after what and all that kind of stuff. But that is all for next time out. For the moment, let's just have a big old party. King Offer, you, you absolutely deserve it. Go and have a party. Go and have the champagne and the tea and the cakes and the fancy nibbles. Have a, have a dance at the disco. Bust some moves because, uh, yeah, it is, it is a glorious day for the Cupboard Dynasty. They are finally kings. And uh, yeah, I think this, this, we're going to have to leave it here. This is perfect. This is perfect. Let's just sit and drink it in for a moment. Because yeah, we've worked long, a long time to get this. And it is indeed most splendid. But we'll finish up for now. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, then please do leave a like. That would be very, very splendid indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Crusader Kings 3. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard. And I will see you next time. They've ripped my arms off, ripped my legs off. I mean, you know, unfortunately they didn't rip anything else off. Yes, I'm off my face on mushrooms. Why, Lady Charlotte, I, uh, I would certainly love to taste your cake. The King of the West is an idiot. I am off my face on mushrooms. I mean, asking me questions isn't going to be my strong point at the minute.